Hi everyone, this is Zahra Mar from Contemporary Quilling and it is Saturday movie night. Um, as you can see, it's going to be about how we're going to quill these beautiful vortexes. I saw these vortexes um, back uh, a little while ago um, on Pinterest and I thought, you know, I really need to make this. It, it just looks super awesome. So I tried and Googled it and saw a couple of tutorials, YouTube images, but nothing was really clear. Um, so hits and misses uh, and uh, I kind of finally figured out what works, what doesn't work. So we begin with 3mm strips um, and I'm going to use just a dot of glue. Okay. And a lot of tutorials show you where people put outrageous amounts of glue. Um, please don't do that. The less glue it, there is, the more neater your work. Also, when you're joining two strips, what you could do is you could tear two tear the uh, you know edges and stick them together um they kind of give a nice continuity and another thing that you must not do is people put glue over here and then squeeze out and clean out over here no please that just like that gives a, a terrible skin and an after a terrible after look it looks like Voldemort is shedding its skin and um, you know what some people call like Stacy calls them boogers um, you don't want that it's these really tiny things that make a difference to your overall work um, when I'm applying glue, I also do this. I take out my glue on plastic cards. This is a gift card. And um, so what it basically does is it air dries this glue and I can use this glue up to two hours. So when it air dries, it kind of becomes a little more tacky. And because of that, it sticks better. You use little and it sticks better. So it's neater. All right, um, let's begin. So we're going to use these quilling strips just as is. If I were to roll this otherwise to make anything else, I would be taking my needle tool or something, you know, even my finger and curl the paper just to give it a nice flexibility. But what I learned was that if I curl the paper, the vortex doesn't open up on its own as beautifully as it does when I don't curl it. So don't curl this paper. Simply start rolling. Your coils have to be really tight. Um, I tried making loose coils, coils with space in the center, um, but nothing works as best as a simple coil, tight coil. <laughs> oh, another thing is that if you use a lot of glue and if that glue sticks out as a joining part, what happens is when this you let this vortex loose to unroll, that sticky part is going to stick and it won't open up. So you've got to be careful about that. And there it is. Just clean it up. Okay. Very tight coil. All right. Now you simply, what you need to do is pinch it pinch it hard so that there's no space left in between and literally you're not turning this into a mark we know no two edges but you're just simply squeezing it in the center okay no rocket science to this but you just can't let it loose you need a circle template to put it in um you know so that it can unfold over there in case you don't have this or um, 
you know, uh, you don't want to use this. Another thing you can do is you can make your own circle templates. Um, I did this for an experiment and I ended up using it for coils, for unrolling coils more than my experiment. Um, what I simply did was I cut circles um, of different diameters and then I just, you know, on edge, uh, put a strip around so they made circle templates. So I'm gonna take this away. I'm gonna actually open it over here. All right, select a suitable size. I think this would do okay. I'm not gonna let it go. I'm gonna zoom it in. Let's see. Hello. Okay. And let it go. Okay, you need a bit bigger circle. Keep moving to a bigger circle if you think there's no space. See? Let it open, let it open. And the thing is, if you let it open on its own, it's going to come out um, even better than when you force it open. And I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where they use this needle tool um, to open the whole thing. I think it's, it's just a waste of time um, and effort. Okay, the core doesn't open on its own. You will need to give it a little bit of a push. So, mildly. Open, open sesame. right till the edge of the strip from where you began so you you've got to keep opening it up okay we're done yeah let's see can see it. Alright. And glue dip this much. Hold it. Just a little bit and in fact if you have a lot more just take out the access that's it and then hold and that's it vortex so you can play around with different colors different schemes um you know the sky is the limit so next up is cardstock. Now this is uh, approximately, I think something around 90 pounds, 95 pounds cardstock, which is not too heavy, but um, cardstocks don't make really nice vortexes. Um, why is that? Because they don't open up that well. They don't have that much flexibility. Um, I have managed to make some cardstock vortexes for a project that I did when I was learning how to make them and I made them into a cloud but other than this actually I haven't really even found a use for vortexes excepting that they look really pretty and maybe one day if I do something like a landscape something what you know Janet does which is amazing um, I'll probably fill it up with vortexes yeah, I think so. Okay, so for cardstock, do what I told you not to do in the normal quilling strips, which is because you need to give it flexibility. And that's the only way it'll open. Okay, put this in. Twist, twist, twist.
There we have it. And pinch. Oh, it's really hard to pinch cardstock. Like, really hard. Okay. I think I'm going to open it in this. And let me zoom in. Yeah. There we go. No, it won't be able to open it in this. All right. So when it needs space to open when you think it's not opening because there's no space more to a cycle uh, more to a circle that's bigger um you see it's begun to open but it needs a push if you don't have a needle tool a pin works just as fine i mean you could use you know this too but i wouldn't advise it because if the edge goes in it'll just destroy the strip itself so anything sharp just to give it a nudge Move it around. and we open it up right till the end there you go all right so you see what i mean by um cardstock not opening it not opening up as beautifully as the quilling strips if i compare this to this look at how this fans out you know what i mean um so the next thing that uh, we are going to do is we're going to do a really long strip um this is one color two colors three four five and these are all random colors that i could you know just grab um the more colors you use the more evident the design is but i tried to make a vortex coil out of the whole rainbow and i used the the complete entire you know strips which were um more than a foot long each um, it took me crazy amount of time to wind those things up um, and it didn't come out good um, mainly because uh, the the coil was too big and when I tried to squeeze it it wouldn't then I squeezed it with a, a plier it did squeeze but when it opened up it didn't open up well it was just way too big so i believe that the more um big the coil is in vortexes um it just doesn't come out that really well yeah pinch it and pinch some more. Oh! Bam, 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 bam. Oh! And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up in my own um, circle template. Okay. Let it loose! Yeah! You see? Look at that. All right. So the core like i said won't open up you will have to open it up with a needle tool um let's do that now what i feel and this is just my opinion that if um, you use a darker strip at the end and a lighter one or you move down the gradient these vortex coils really look pretty pretty cool um, you can use different shades and just move up to the darker one lighter one in the center or you can use complementary colors to set them apart or um, multiple things like um, let's see something like this is uh, red on the outside, purple, and then um, yellowish orange. This is a yellow in the center and blue outside. Yeah. Okay, okay. 
so what am i going to do is really carefully take it out you know once it opens up like that you don't have to be too too careful about it that it's gonna you know really open up badly unless you completely let it go um but if this becomes loose you can always tighten it up a bit but you've got to keep a hold on the center Tiny bit of glue. And hold. And that's it. And this one, I haven't even adjusted it. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, even gonna touch it. Um, yeah. All right. So I've got one more trick up my sleeve. Um, and that's going to be a completely new experiment. I haven't, I thought about it just as I was doing this, um, that, you know, let's, let's just give it a try. I've never done that before. Um, what that's going to be is I am going to use my crimper and see if the crimper actually makes a vortex or not. I have no idea. This is like completely new territory for me. Um, Okay. So this crimper is awesome. I know a lot of people have it. Uh, there are multiple settings. This one is the fattest crimper. Um, second, third, fourth, um, fifth, and sixth. And all of these are different. Um, you know, they, they crimp differently. Uh, I am going to do one with the second crimp. Not the finest one, but the second finest one. Okay. All right. So, oh, I think this is going to be become a crimping video too. So you move it in here and turn it around. Oopsie. And it comes out. Crimped. I love crimped strips. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd be crimping the crimping everything that I'd, I'd be making. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, especially when they're making flowers, uh, spe uh, they they use crimp paper, and I completely get them. I completely understand the love for crimp. Um, yeah. So let's do this. And. This time I'm not putting too much pressure because if I put too much pressure, the crimp is going to open. So it is going to be a tight coil, but not too much of pressure. Almost there. Okay, great. So you see, let me move this close. I mean, you can see spaces over here. It's a tight coil, but there is spaces because I didn't want to get rid of the crimp itself. All right. Squeeze. And uh, I think a little bit of crimp just like opened up. Okay. Anyway, that's bound to happen, I think it over here it's not opening up on its own yeah that's what I feared and... yeah it's not opening up as it should mainly because I know I didn't make enough of a tight coil but if I did make it any tighter than I had to um, you know the point of me crimping the uh, strip the, it, it will just be moot right so um, one last thing that we're going to do is we are going to use a different width this is um, a 10mm strip um, and 
I am going to roll this with a beading tool. Why am I using this? Because, well, I don't have a slotted tool which has too much of a width capacity. I mean, this, this does like maximum maybe 5 mm. And if I try to put this in, let me show you. If I try to put this in, this thing sticks out. And if I roll it, the center is kind of weird. And you could use a needle tool to roll this with, but I I still haven't kind of perfected, you know, doing that. So I, I use a, um, a beading tool. Now, the problem with the beading tool is, is that it it's, there's a slit just on one side, okay? And if this is thick, and this comes in many thicknesses, I've got the one with size, well, yeah. So, oh, it's not zooming out. Yeah, so this has multiple thicknesses. This one is a little fatter one. And somewhere over here, I have two more which are even more fatter. So what this does is if the circle is um, big, your center is going to be big and you don't want that. To overcome this circle issue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to slide this paper in and slightly take out the paper till it comes towards the edge. Slightly. And now roll. Ugh. Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Especially when you're doing the final cut. Okay, I think this is like the 10th video that I've made. I want to do as little editing as possible and this is the first time I'm ever making um, such a tutorial. I mean I've done picture tutorials or just like mini clips where I don't have to speak much. I can edit as much as I want um, but yeah I mean bear with me. Sorry if I'm a little irritating or um, you know, confusing. You can always leave comments down below. Um, whatever questions you have, I will try to answer them. If you have any requests, please let us know at Contemporary Quilling. Um, we have lovely moderators who um, are tirelessly doing a lot of work in the background and um, we'll try to accommodate as much as possible. All right, so here it is and squeeze and yeah, here right. yeah. open And I don't try to bring my needle tool in until it stopped because um, the way that it opens is just perfect on its own. Right to the center. Ta da! Teeny mini girl. And put it in. So a lot of people I've seen um, try to make this into different shapes and um, I don't really care for that because the original vortex uh, shape in itself is so pretty. But I've seen people turn this into a marquee, into squares, into different shapes. Um, it just loses its beauty if you change it. Um, and I'll just show you why I mean that. Okay, so here. Let's turn this into it. I'm doing this really rough because one eye 
is looking at the camera and one eye is looking at my uh, hand itself. See, you see? It just loses, it, it, it's just a normal marquee. It, it's, it, it just lost its beauty. All right, guys, I hope you liked this version of um, Saturday movie night. Um, and if you have any questions, anything that we can answer, um, just please let us know. And you guys all have a really good weekend. Thank you. I'm back. Um, I just wanted to do one more experiment before we left off. Um, so this is, these are like the extra specials. Um, and I quilled this in the background because it took a hell lot of time to quill. Um, I mean, it, it opened up and I had to do it all over again and it was a mess. Anyways, these are a lot of coils. In fact, these are so many, um, they, they almost have a diameter of up to 30 mm. Um, Anyhow, I'm interested in knowing if this really opens up into a vortex. I have my reservations because, you know, it's really hard to, I, I, I'm thinking it's really hard to pinch it. So let's try it out. And if it doesn't pinch, then it won't come out in that vortex shape, right? No, I mean... It's just not pinching. It's not that hard. So, because I'm a little crazy, I'm going to use pliers. Um, yeah. Some of you actually might know me as the crazy lady who, you know, made a series of hands a little while back. So, yeah, that's me. This is this is like a complete fail. All right, guys. Good night. <laughs> and this time, what I've been doing is I've been squeezing it as I've, you know, been rolling this up. I love mysteries and th thrillers and I love to see them right till the end and try to figure out how it would work and I just couldn't let this go. I mean, if I had not rewound this and done it again, I just wouldn't know how this would end and I'd hate that. So, okay, this time I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to put it down. And I'm gonna squeeze. Oh. Put it down. Uh. Okay. Yay! Open again, but I couldn't roll it. It rolled out, but I'm gonna put it in here and let it roll out. Roll out. Roll out. Roll out. Roll out. It's just, it won't flatten enough to make those edges and that's why those edges don't appear at all. Hmm. So this is not loose anymore. I kind of rewound it a little bit. Um, just, you know, pulled on this and made it a little tight. And this is a little loose. I was just wondering, you know, if I pinch a little looser it i mean it should make those edges and it should come out as a vortex i mean it has to come on so let me see if this works 
But this is gonna be a little big. Oh. Seriously, this is not funny.